dropping out of Stanford was my second best decision in life. Here's why. So when I applied to Stanford, I was 26 years old, Russian male. I graduated from Gimo in Moscow, Bakun University in Milan, and University of Minnesota Department of Economics in the States. I spent three years at McKinsey doing private equity engagements. Got 770 on GMAT and 118 on TIFL. So here are my stats. So I had a funny reason applying to Stanford. I worked in an educational startup with a few of my friends and we desperately needed marketing. So I suggested, why don't we start an online show uh, featuring me, where I will apply to Warden and Stanford, uh, show all my steps, and then eventually show the results and see whether I get admitted or not. Uh, so I wasn't very serious initially. However, as I progressed through the application, I got more and more serious about admission, and I even decided to drop Wharton just because I didn't have enough time to apply everywhere, and I wanted to concentrate on Stanford. Why did I get so serious about Stanford? Because I wanted to get three things from my MBA education. I wanted to find great mentor for the company, I wanted to find additional co-founders that would help us develop the company. And I also wanted to learn from great leaders in education, which are mainly concentrated in the Silicon Valley and in Stanford. So essays, all right, essays. I remember lots of iterations and I remember that my first cuts were complete disaster. I had to work with several of my friends who really helped me tremendously with sharing feedback, saying like, okay, this essay looks like you, oh, this essay doesn't look like you. It seems like you really hate your job based on this essay. It seems like you are not really sincere in your essay. So I collected this feedback and it really helped. I also worked with an MBA coach, Thomas Hubert, and he's an amazing person. He really helped me understand how to write essays in English, which is in English style rather than Russian English. Just get into the war room, war room, baby, yeah, yeah. Another thing that helped me write good essays was a book on writing well by William Zinsser because it truly taught me how to communicate efficiently and clearly in a concise manner, at least in the essays. Of course. So I wrote two essays to Stanford, one, What Matters Most, which was a collection of short stories about passionate people who I met throughout my life, and another was a uh, Why Stanford essay where I talked about my vision for the company in 2021, where I would work with my friend from Stanford, graduate several thousand students, and basically become a real huge university myself, which is uh, where I want to lead FLAS eventually. By the way, you can read the essays here. My recommenders were two of the most amazing people I met at McKinsey. One was a partner, another was my direct supervisor, a manager. I tried to choose my recommenders based on, my, on the strength of my relationship with them, rather than based on their profiles or based on their rankings. Because it's more important that people can support you, discuss their recommendations with you, and really want to bring value to the table of the application process, rather than just say, okay, you can come up with some recommendation, I'm gonna sign it and send it over for you. I definitely didn't want to do that, and I'm glad that I found great people who were happy to support me uh, up until the end. Guys, thank you very much for your help. Questions that I prepared for the interview. The interview itself was terrible. I really felt that I screwed it all because the interviewer, it seemed to me, didn't feel like I fit into the Stanford community. That's probably the end of my application to Stanford. But luckily it wasn't because on March 29th, I got a call from Derek. So I got admitted into Stanford! So the Stanford offer was the good news. The bad news, however, was the cost of attendance. I was planning to go to Stanford with my wife and one-year-old daughter. Given that I would need to spend money on tuition, on living expenses and medical insurance and whatnot, 
I would need to get something like $280,000 for two years. Frankly speaking, I didn't have that much money. Getting a loan was not a problem. The problem was giving this loan back eventually. After the MBA, I wanted to work on Flash, which is a startup and of course there won't be lots of cash flow initially. But that would not work if I had to pay a loan. I could work in some other company, for example, at Amazon in operations or whatever, maybe even at Google, maybe go back to McKinsey uh, and pay back the loan. But I would need to spend some like five years to pay the loan back. And after that time, well, who knows what would happen. So overall, that would be two, which is MBA, plus five, which is the time that I need to pay back the loan. Uh, seven years that I would need to spend in order to get this background, which I felt was necessary for my startup. I had to really rethink this strategy. It seems like maybe these seven years are not necessary. Maybe I can learn by doing so. Start working on Flash right away, uh, avoid the loan, and try to bootstrap my startup right now. Try to find mentors somewhere, try to find uh, co-founders and people who can help. Try, try to learn from people, but not necessarily uh, in a business school. Based on the research, the profound research that I did, uh, talking to several alumni, both from Russia and abroad, I realized that uh, I really could expect a good life in California, probably uh, working for a good company, uh, living in a decent house, uh, enjoying the sunshine, enjoying the palm trees, whatever. But that would put a cross on my dream of building an international university class. But after all, this dream was my real reason for applying to Stanford, right? This is why I started in the first place. So that would be really stupid to now drop it just because I felt, well, I could go to such a great school, become a great manager at a great company, live in California, stuff like that. I have only one life and I really want to concentrate on where my heart leads me. So I decided to follow my dream and drop out of Stanford. So it's been uh, one and a half years since I decided to drop out of Stanford. Am I happy with my decision? Definitely. Because now I can work on what really matters to me. By the way, the thing that I was writing about in my essay, I can work on the company that truly really changes people's lives internationally. And I really believe that it will be a great thing, a big important thing in the future. It is important for me and for my students even now, but it will be even more important. So I'm now turning my dream into reality. Sometimes it's hard and slow, but this is something that really makes me happy, that makes me feel important in this life. So I'm definitely satisfied with my decision. What do you think, by the way? Do you think I made the right decision? What would you do if you were in my shoes? Write in the comments below. Ask questions, I'll be happy to reply. And of course, subscribe. See you guys.